I'm a film critic and teacher. I'm an obsessed person, obsessed with film and film history and with so, so many things and a devoted amateur. I was always impressed with this particular film and with this particular scene and then I wrote a piece on that particular scene and on how sound becomes non-anthropomorphic in that scene. The sound becomes unnatural, becomes mechanical. And then I started to play around with re-edit it or rather just like move from one frame of the film to the next. So also the question of image and film. And I thought I could do almost like a companion piece to the written text, but then at the same time that also does something, something different and yeah, that sound becomes an, 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 an object also in the sense of that we're no longer sure where the sound comes from, that we're no longer sure about the source of a sound. I find it interesting that today we have the possibility to watch easily films in a way that we were never able before. I mean, normally you, you're, you're supposed to watch a film as a moving image, not frame by frame. The only way that you could do that was when you were actually a filmmaker. Uh, but today with the digital medium, every one of us can become a filmmaker. I would also um, give a slightly new meaning to the term analysis because we have the tendency of understanding analysis that analysis is about to, um, to uh, define and eventually also to contain what you look at. It's kind of like I've analyzed it and by that I've put it into distance. I, I know what it is about. I, I, I have a drawer where I can put it in. Um, whereas for me, analysis is the very opposite. Analysis is not even to explain, but rather to, to, um, yeah, to, to revitalize what, 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 I'm, what I'm looking at. Therefore, also, I think I'm happy with this particular video essay because I have the feeling that, on the one hand, I took it apart, I broke it down. One realizes there's a kind of like an analytical viewpoint. I, I'm bringing film theory into it. But then the video essay itself becomes, in, in, in the best of the possibilities, almost like, yeah, becomes a new kind of film and has a, and has a, a new vital quality to it. Even if you're not interested in, in film analysis at all and in film theory, I think the video essay has a, 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 a dramaturgic arc that, 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 that works. It's like uh, eye and ear openers that you start to see things that before you thought were unimportant or you, yeah, you were not even aware of them. There's a small instance in just one single frame we have a scratch on the film material. By accident, it, on the one hand on the sound level it sounds like you hear the scratch on the material and you also have the impression that the character in the film sees the scratch on the film material, which is, of course, absurd. That is certainly also something that we actually also um, see when we sit in a, in, in a film, even if we're not aware of them. reading a lot of um, musical theory uh, on, on the musique concrète 
And of course, it's not by accident that the interest of music concrete, of course, develops. It has to develop in parallel to to the technical devices of of sound recording. That was, in fact, what 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 made this interrogation of the sound object even possible. That you could record something, that you could deconstruct it and start to look at, <laughs> look at it. So already <laughs> to to hear at a individual. A sound. But I only use the sound bites that belong to that particular frame that we're watching. We realize when we chop into pieces a sound bite, yeah, that it becomes autonomous, and that is also the subject in the in the in the theory text that I put into that, that it becomes a, a object in itself. And what is important, that it becomes a, a mysterious object, that the sound object is, is we, we are trained to think about sound in regard to the source of the sound. We hopefully also start to listen more closely to, well, but what is this sound in itself? What are the qualities of that particular sound? I also hope that it really becomes something different and that people who are very familiar with this film, Kiss Me Deadly by Robert Aldrich, that they would, that they would still be surprised by how differently it looks and sounds. <laughs> what Pierre Schaeffer describes that he says we have to think about sound no longer in reference, in relation to the source, but we have to listen to sound in its autonomy as a as a object, and then has like this uh, poetic description that it is like a surface, that it is like a cloth, that it has a tactile um, aspect to it. I thought, well, that is precise. It's almost like a description of this scene, the way I am um, presented in this in this uh, film. But I also realized that I wanted to put this text into the film. I didn't want to make a uh, a voiceover because I really wanted to have like the, the just just the the the, the, the sound phenomenon um, undisturbed. But then I also realized by putting text into the into the image, you have, on the one hand, it can be read at, almost like as a subtitle or as a description of what we see and hear, but at the same time it becomes also autonomous and has a new quality. Something similarly with, I started with a quote by, by Michel Serre from his book The Five Senses, in which he says, um, at the beginning everything is enveloped in a film, at the beginning is touch and uh, the medium. And I just thought it's interesting, when he, when he talks about film, he does, he's not thinking about movies, he, he's thinking about a film in a literal sense, it's just like a surface. In this book he's very much interested in what happens when we touch something or when we get touched, and he has this idea that the, the 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 subject is something that is constantly in construction by by touch, uh, like the center of my being is is movable on my on on the surface of my body, but maybe even beyond, and uh, that is also of course a kind of like a description of what we have in this scene when she touches this object and it and it's kind of like she, she starts to 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 sense something and also um, sense herself. I'm very happy with that. That is kind of like uh, starts to have um, echoes and 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 and, and so many many uh, allusions and and starts to open up to be to be read in very different ways. To me, that is one of the big questions of the video essay, how to put into place productive restrictions. And in my case, several of the restrictions just come with inability. 
um, that I'm not a trained filmmaker. I'm an absolute amateur. I'm working with poor technology, although already this poor technology is, of course, uh, in- incredible technology. And I also try to limit myself in, in several ways. So, so while I find it very fascinating, precisely this aspect of reversibility, play it forward, play it backward, make, make a loop out of it. I also, for myself, decided I do not want to have a jump in it. I do not want to cut away. I cut away to myself um, working on, on, on this particular uh, video essay, but that's the only thing. I find it interesting that this, uh, and, and kind of liberating, that you not only have the possibility in the video essay to, to bring together all these different films, which I find a fascinating aspect, but also the, the freedom of staying with one particular film, and not just with one film, but with one scene and one moment in it and one image in it, and that you can revisit it and watch it again and uh, try to, to, to find out even more what, what, what can be in it. That someone who has seen this video essay um, wants to watch Kiss Me Deadly again and sees something that he has never seen before in it, that, 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 that to me is already... Because that, that what, was it, what it was about, to show that it's still unfinished business. <laughs>